morning everyone. Starting the day off from home. I was able to sneak home for a night. I got home at about just after four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And now we're headed back to the shop. We gotta be in Brandon for 8 a.m. Which is uh, about three hours from Steinbeck here in a truck. We're getting an early start. I'm feeling good though. Feeling good. I'm usually not a morning person, but every now and then you wake up super early, you're like, yes, this is great. It's rare, but <laughs> I got a good sleep the night before. I think that's what matters. The thing is, I am a morning person. Once I'm awake, I love the morning. I love watching the sun come up. It's just, I'm also a night owl. So if I wake up early, I, I very often work late into the night. And then I work late into the night. If I get up early, you know, it's a short night. My problem is going to bed early. It's not because I'm lazy staying up just watching TV. No, usually it's because I'm working. I'm usually working late into the night. I, I like getting stuff done in the night. And sometimes it's because I just stay up watching TV, but that's on the weekends, right? I only have a couple more weeks left of sleeping in. And then I will never sleep in again. What is it now? It's four or five weeks? Yikes. Uh, let's say five weeks. We don't know yet. In about a week, we have a, a uh, an appointment with the surgeon, like I was telling you yesterday, that does the C-section. So we'll figure out exactly the day when it's going to be. But it'll be about five weeks. The baby will be here, and we will never sleep again. So enjoying it while I can. Good morning, old blue. Oh. Alright, 
take, it's gonna take uh, one hour to get to our destination. It took three times longer to load it than it will to actually bring it to where it needs to be. But at least I'm getting like a backhaul right out of the same yard where I'm delivering it to. So I'm getting this stuff off my trailer, loading it right back up right there. truck and for me to tie it down together so three hours there drove an hour down the road and it took him another hour to unload the truck and for me to roll up all my straps and then they reloaded me with just as complicated of a load just going to Winnipeg right here so it took me another two hours so it was three hours there three hours here six hours today I was outside tying down loads and uh, untying unloading reloading loading again loading this loading that taking this off securing that and now finally on my way back to Winnipeg uh, I'm just waiting for confirmation what they want me to do. If they want me to deliver this first thing in the morning, or if they have other plans for me, or I don't know. I'm sure as soon as I start rolling, the phone's gonna ring. I've been waiting here for about 15 minutes. I think I'm just gonna get my Bluetooth on my head and get uh, get on the road. I wanna get going. Because if they don't have plans for me, if they don't want me to deliver this into Winnipeg first thing in the morning, well, I wanna drop this trailer in the yard and go home. But it would make sense just for me to stay in Winnipeg and deliver it in the morning and then go home tomorrow. At least the load's delivered then, right? I don't mind doing that. I think that would make the most sense. We'll see what happens. I'm guessing as soon as I get out on the highway, that's when they're gonna call. I bet you anything. Oh. Nope, nope. Okay, I thought it was gonna start ringing. It usually starts ringing as soon as I start rolling. Like the second I start rolling. long day rolling into Headingley. I've only driven 670 kilometers today. 
what is that, like 360, 370 miles? And I've only got an hour and 15 minutes left on my 16 hour day. That's how much time I spent outside tarp uh, strapping and waiting. So I'm stopping just up the road at the Flying J. I'm gonna fuel up and then go find a parking spot and go have a shower. I don't often stop at, you know, the Winnipeg truck stops. Usually I would just go home. But I have to deliver this freight first thing in the morning into Winnipeg. Then I can go home. So I may as well go and use the shower at the Flying J. It's been a long day. I was gonna get some editing done, but I might just save that for this weekend. We'll see. Maybe I can at least get one video done. It's only 7.30 in the evening. By the time I'm done fueling up, it'll be quarter to eight or maybe eight o'clock. There should still be lots of parking, right? You would think. There it is right over there. Hey, it looks pretty full already. Wow. Oh no, there's lots of parking, Never mind. I don't Hoping to get a good parking spot. Turn right on. Look at the difference between gasoline and diesel. Gasoline's going for a dollar fifty-three per liter. Diesel's going for a dollar ninety-six. Why is diesel fuel so much more expensive than gasoline? Riddle me that. Is it because it's more in demand? Like they sell more of it because trucks obviously burn more than cars. So. Why is it like that? Oh, and of course there's a long lineup for fuel. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Everybody's grabbing their fuel and going inside having supper and a shower before moving from the fuel islands. Yikes. Look at this. Look at this mess. Are there any open ones? Yikes, eh? Oh, maybe right on the end? Oh, that guy's gonna take it, isn't he? He's going for it, he's going for it. Nah, I was gonna take that one. No line up here. Aha, he's just hanging up the fuel pump too. Nice. Hopefully that means they're actually gonna move and not go inside and have supper. Oh, they're not hanging it up. Yeah, it goes right there, bud. Right on the right. Yep, just hang it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Oh, they're gonna do their reefer now. Shoot. This guy's parked here, he's not even fueling. It's just parked there. Uh, I'd like to say how surprised I am, but I'm not. You know, this is everywhere we go. It's very common, way too common for people to, you know, grab their fuel and then just leave their truck in the fuel island for like 45 minutes. You know they're not taking their half hour break because that's an American law and we're in Canada. You don't have to take your half hour break here. So there's, no one here is taking their half hour. They're just parked. I think this guy's fueling over here. This guy's fueling his reefer now. This guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's just sitting in the pumps. Not fueling, not doing nothing. Maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe he's fueling his DEF on the other side there, but didn't look like it when we pulled up. Eh, is what it is, eh? Nothing I can really do about it. These guys should be done soon. Oh, I'm tired. I'm not gonna lie, I am tired. Another full, full day. It's 
starting to fill up fast now. I found myself a decent parking spot. Straight shot out down this opening, down the driveway. This guy beside me has all the room to pull out there, make a wide turn around me in the morning so he doesn't take off my hood. This guy beside me has a straight shot out the driveway as well. They have no reason to drag their trailer over my hood in the morning. I think Old Blue will be safe here. Still makes me a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like parking at these busy truck stops, but we're gonna do it tonight. I, I try to just park in the safest spot I can, you know? There was actually a spot open, like right at the front. Right over there, the building's on the other side of those trucks there. Like right up front, third spot from the door, pretty much. And it's not a reserved spot. It was wide open, just singing, singing to me. Hey, Josh, come park over here, Josh. Right over there. Someone else took it already. I could have had like almost front row seats, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't, couldn't make myself do it. Those front spots are so busy. People leaving and going, leaving and going. And in the morning, uh, on the other side, there's the fuel pumps. And sometimes the fuel pumps, like I was saying, get blocked up by people not being very nice people. They're being bad words. So that would block some people from getting out. They might try then, in my head, they might try to make the corner too sharp to avoid the trucks that are parked in front of the pumps for too long and in doing so, dragged their trailer over my hood. I didn't want to risk that. I just, nope, too busy, too busy, too, too much of a risk. I, I saw this spot here and I was like, that's the one. That's the one, look at this. And I don't like parking in these spots over here that are right in front of that row of trucks there. Cause you'll see, if, you, if you've been to these truck stops, you know, you know exactly what's gonna happen. That's the end of the parking spots, right? That last truck is already outside of a parking spot, I think. He's one, he made a spot on this side already, which is fine, because these guys can still get out. Now, what's guaranteed to happen is trucks are gonna come and park beside that truck there. Probably at least two of them. Now, if that happens, this guy beside me is still fine. He can still get out, which is good. But all the trucks beside him are stuck now. They can't get out of their spots because they're blocked in. And some guys who don't know the limits of their trucks or where their trailer is going to go will try to get out anyway, thinking that, oh, I can make it, I can make it, when reality says, no, 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 you cannot make it. And what they'll end up doing is dragging their trailer into their neighbor, ripping off their hood, ruining their life for the next couple of months. Not a good time. Unless they're a company driver, I guess, then it's, hey, get into a different truck. But for the owner operators like me, you tear off my hood because you thought you could make it. Oh, so sorry, my dash camera caught you. You're paying for all of my damages. But the thing is, who's gonna pay for my lost time? This truck's gonna be off the road probably for a couple of months, waiting for parts, getting new paint, getting fixed up, getting the wheels aligned, getting whatever else fixed. What am I gonna do in the meantime? I guess I could sue him for uh, lost time or something, but I don't know where that would go. And suing people's expensive. It's not a big thing in Canada. It's not like in the US where you can, you know, walk across someone's lawn and fall and scratch your face or something or scratch your hand and sue them. It's not like that here. So even though, yeah, I got you on camera, you're gonna pay for all the damages. I'm still without a truck until the truck is fixed. And if I'm without a truck, I'm without an income. I could rent a truck to use, which is what I would do in the meantime, I guess. But that means I'm making zero profit, pretty much. I've never had to rent one. Uh, I mean, I could rent one off a company for a pretty good rate, but if they don't have any available, I'll have to rent one. And that just eats up my whole profits. So now I gotta wait for my truck to get fixed. Hopefully you didn't wreck it so bad it can't get fixed because that would make me very angry, man. And you're gonna need more than the insurance adjuster. You're gonna need some police over here. I'm gonna be mad. So I try to park in a spot where I'm, I'm just not worried about that happening or where the least chance of that happening 
where there's the least chance of that happening. Sorry, I can't English, like I said. I am tired, really tired. My 16 hour day is just about up. I worked 15 and a quarter hours today. It's time to go to bed. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for listening to me rant, seeing the scenery with me. We were just out here on the prairies in Manitoba, my home province. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the like button if you did like the video. If you didn't like the video, like I always say, you can hit the dislike button twice. That's the magic number. And I'll see you tomorrow.